Um, I would now like to invite our second presenter, Fakri Karim, the lead advisor for SGAC program. Um, I believe ev almost everyone in the room has already met him. Um, so without much, um, without further ado, um, Mr. Fakri, the floor is yours for your presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Kathleen. Uh, I'm trying to, yeah, good. So somebody shared it now. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a, a little bit, uh, uh, I got cold since yesterday. So I'm, I'm a little bit of coughing in the middle. Sorry for that. Lucky we are on the online. So I will guarantee I will not pass to any of you there. So, uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> thank you for this. Uh, at this uh, time, uh, as part of this, the, the masterclass webinar, uh, we would like to share or go to introduce the UNCDF financial uh, mechanism approach that we are currently uh, promoting and implementing as part of the SGSC support to the cities in terms of financing or improving finance cities financing capacity for their development. Uh, uh, I believe I met uh, uh, most of the participant uh, in either in uh, uh, Banyumas or in the country. So very happy to see you again. And uh, I also assumed uh, this kind of uh, financing mechanism had been discussed quite some time ago in our last meeting. So for now, I just go through a, a very small presentation as uh, the detailed one will be in the next uh, presentation, I guess, in the next uh, deep training. So uh, uh, dual key at glance uh, in UNCDF, uh, since last 15 years, I'll say, uh, we, based on our experience in uh, supporting or helping uh, local government and cities to improve their financial capacity, we have introduced uh, this dual key financing mechanism. Actually, this dual key financing mechanism has uh, been used uh, uh, along the year to source the project and then to do uh, uh, undertake a full due diligence, structure the investment, and then uh, assess both the development impact and financial impact. So it's quite similar to what has been uh, present just now. Uh, the purpose is quite uh, the same, to see what are the, the, the development impact and what are the financial key. So based on, on the 15 years experience, we somehow has uh, collect a lot of uh, indicators on the, the, the development impact that we uh, put as part of this dual key financial mechanism. So the first key is the impact key. That is very much the development impact that uh, based on the how that development will impact the local economic development, the emergency response in some countries where you deal with the development post uh, disaster, for example, or post uh, conflict. And then how it impact women economic empowerment. And of course, how it impact climate change. Uh, this is where a huge uh, agenda issues challenge we are facing and how in fact food security and many other impact areas or data, later on when we go detail into this i, I assume in the next training in, in the next webinar we're going to look more detail uh, on each of those impact and then the second uh, key is financial key of course so the financial key it's focused on the financial impacts project. Uh, how that financial uh, will improve the uh, business model uh, of the uh, whatever 
project pipeline that city is introduced. And how that uh, financial key will improve the city's or local government capacity through its project pipeline able to access private finance. So the key in this case, this key is not only look at bankability because access the finance is not only access private finance, but it's more how to access different sources of finance. So it's more about how to put the pipeline of project that financeable rather than only bankable. So the pipeline project, which able to finance through public finance, will able to finance through other sorts of public finance, kind of grant, uh, CSR, or other concessional finance. And also a pipeline that able to access the private finance, uh, such as uh, sources from the bank or other kind of investor. So for sure, as mentioned, it's not only about bankability, but about financeable. So the objective of these uh, tools is to determine a proposed project that has potential sustain uh, in uh, its, its uh, activities. And then, uh, so that, that uh, very much the dual key and uh, what we would like to see in the in the system in the framework and then uh, to make sure that to us dual key is uh, involved with a certain process and quality then we have the step we have the process of doing this uh, i'll quickly go through this as uh, as glenn uh, later on we'll go to detail uh, steps one uh, yeah, state A at the organization, state zero, where project sourcing. Project sourcing is very much to identify the project, uh, a potential project uh, at the city or local government level. I guess for collecting SDSC, this is very much what we did during the scoping mission. So we all, we're all into this already. So during the scoping mission, we go and sit down and see what are the potential projects it is working on, and then uh, <coughs> some projects that already uh, financed by the city and we would like to scale up, or is still an ID, or some project is already already working with the private, all those kind of things. So we uh, work at that stage. So I think uh, in this case for SGSC city, uh, except Vietnam. Myanmar, we all already go through this uh, state one system uh, where we have a potential project identified. And then state two is a soft pipeline project preparation and pre-assessment. So based on that uh, pro, uh, uh, project identification, and then the UNDP or a special part of team of the dual key mechanism called investment officer starts to get involved in those project uh, to review uh, and check and compile collect all the information related to the project uh, to meet the need of the standards due diligence procedures uh, of the mechanism, a financing mechanism. So uh, I believe uh, a colleague, for example, in this case, uh, uh, but I think, uh, I think uh, some others already know Michael Mboa. That is where Michael come to meet with the, the, the project owner to start getting all the information and for Michael to start this is uh, due diligence. So I think for the country who we don't go through that yet, uh, uh, soon you will, you will go through this. So the investment officer involved to start getting uh, all the information, uh, uh, the, the preliminary information of the project. And that's will being asked to the uh, group B, due diligence, 
What tends to is hard pipeline structure uh, and, and due diligence. This is kind of at fund due diligence where the investment financial modeling structure. So those investment officers working together with the project owner starts to uh, uh, put the, the, the modeling of the, uh, the final uh, modeling structure and put the a full analysis of sensitivity and makes different scenario of financial instrument pathway. Can be credit guarantee, can be bond, can be many different things. So uh, this option, uh, they start to look at it at this stage. And then uh, this uh, uh, detailed due diligence uh, uh, process, and then it will bring to the investment readiness so if we if if through this if you pass this process for example then your pipeline considered ready for the investment readiness stage so in the investment pack uh, investment readiness we talk about the investment packets so here is cleaning up update compilation synchronizing finalizing key project document and then uh, to make the investment packet ready so uh, then the due diligence and transaction structuring manager will submit this to we call the senior investment committee in UNCDF as part of this, the key uh, dual key system. So colleague, the, the quality assurance of this system is very robust and that's why it's look uh, quite complicated. But when you in that process, it will flow by itself uh, uh easily i'll say and then execution financial closure so the well, exactly thanks that would be helpful uh yeah and then the dual key investment committee uh will uh, review the the document and then if you pass this uh, financial committee review and then the project will be finally uh, approved and a, the, the legal will make the agreement and then the financial closure bank and equity and, and, and uh, equity and an investor and then after that will be the financial disbursement of course uh, this is uh, uh, where all the project want to see uh, to make sure I mean, they got the fund after the long process. And then uh, remember after the financial disbursement, the, it's not finished. So uh, the bigger part of it, in, in fact, is the project implementation and then the project operationalization assessment and evaluation. And then come back to the impact measurement and reporting. So project implementation very much in this case is not UNCDF or the work key system who want to implement it. It's the project owner who will implement it. But under monitoring and guidance of the uh, dual key mechanism. So dual key mechanism will not leave the project owner by itself just like that it will go together, especially to support the monitoring uh, pr purpose of it. And then the, uh, the post implementation uh, will be a review and answer corrective measures if needed. So based on monitoring and reviewing, if anything happened, somehow the project delay or somehow the profits or revenue is not as expected, so then we will review and we'll, uh, we will do the, the, what the uh, corrective measure needed. And uh, sorry. that's important. Sorry. I'm sorry, the time is up. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think uh, we, we conclude okay. that.